At this point, you have a fairly good idea of how to create pipelines using completable futures. In this lecture, let's take a look at two of the most important methods, then compose and then combine. Let's take a look at then compose first. If you take a close look at the then apply method on the screen, it takes in a function which handles the task result from the previous stage, that is the supply async, and returns an integer. That's what that lambda means. But in many cases, the function might not be returning an object, but a completable future. When would that happen? Maybe you are calling a library which returns a completable future, and you want to use that library. Whatever the reason may be, that's when we use the then compose. Here's an example. You see a method called handle task result, which takes in a task result object and returns a completable future of generic type string. This method kicks off a new asynchronous task and returns a completable future to represent that, basically indicating that the result is not immediately available but will be available when completed in the future. You can see from the example, instead of then apply, we are now using then compose. So basically, you should use then compose when the return type of the function is a completable future. But note that even if the return type is completable future of type string, the next stage would still be a string and not completable future of string. In this case, the pipeline is making sure that the then accept stage is triggered only after the completable future returned by handle task result completes. Note here that the supply async stage, the then compose stage, then apply stage, then accept stage all run one after another serially. None of them run in parallel. The asynchronous tasks themselves would be running in parallel, but the entire orchestration of these tasks, called the pipeline, runs sequentially. Now the end result is the output shown at the bottom. Until now, we looked at only a single task which ran asynchronously and subsequent pipeline stages ran one after another to handle the output of this asynchronous task. Now let's take a look at the then combine method. This is where completable future starts to get complicated to read. Let's take a look. On the screen, you have two suppliers, task one and task two. The intention here is to run the two tasks in parallel and the result of the two tasks need to be combined and then the standard then apply and then accept stages need to be called. This is exactly where then combine is used. Let's trace the code on the screen. The pipeline starts by running task one asynchronously. Where is it going to run? It will run on the common fork join pool. In fact, by the time pipeline is initially created, two tasks have already started running in parallel, task one and task two. Task one completes in three seconds but then the pipeline execution does not progress till the task two is completed. Once task two is completed, the lambda for combining the task results is triggered. The fuse method is simply a method to combine the results into a one string. After this, then apply and then accept stages are called as usual. The result of this execution is shown at the bottom of the screen. Here's another example where four tasks are kicked off in parallel, task one, task two, task three, and task four. We then combine the results using the then combine method. As you see on the screen, we can most certainly use multiple then combine stages. The result of previous stage is the input to the next one. The final result is shown at the bottom. Should be fairly straightforward to go through it. One advantage here is that the asynchronous calls are kicked off explicitly upfront, so it is easier to read. Whereas in some of the previous examples, they were kicked off in the middle of the pipeline, so it was not very clear 
what was happening. Now let's try something different. Knowing what we know of completable future, let's solve a problem. Pause this video and read through this problem. See if you can solve it and then start the video again. So hope you had some time to look at this problem. Basically what, what we want is for the task one and task two to run in parallel. Once both of them complete, we need to apply a function to the result and then start task three and task four in parallel. Once task three and task four complete, we should accept the final result. And the total time should be roughly about 10 seconds. Here's my solution. We know for a fact that task one and task two needs to be started immediately. So we can do this using the supply async method. But we don't want to start task three and task four at this time. So we hold off on that one. We of course need to combine the results of task one and task two using then combine. That's how we wait for both of them to complete. And then use the then apply to apply a function on the result as you see on the screen. So up till now, it's all relatively straightforward. Next, we need to create a stage which will start task three and task four in parallel, wait for both to finish. We can use supply async again to kick off both tasks in parallel, task three and task four, and then combine the results as we have done before using the then combine method. But the output of the then combine is a completable future. How do we integrate a function which returns a completable future into our pipeline? We already know that. We need to use the then compose for that. And after we use the then compose, finally we use the then accept to print the final result. That's pretty much it. This is how you would be constructing your completable future pipelines. You can then refactor to move the function into a separate method and then use a method reference to make the code more readable. The last three lectures should be sufficient to give you an overview of how completable future pipelines are created in practice, what they are intended for, and how you can use them in your applications as well.